Have you ever been certain your telephone would ring in the next ten seconds? Or have you ever walked down a strange street and had the feeling that you knew what lay beyond the unturned corner? Yes? Then you've had a brief encounter with the world of the unknown. You are ready for the actual human experience that follows. It's a pleasant apartment. Nice room. For such a terrifying thing to happen. But who among us can ever know when or where the psychic lightning will strike? And who among us is ever really prepared for a shattering glimpse into the world of the unknown? Certainly Anthony March was not. This is his Greenwich Village apartment in New York City. It's a comfortable, charming room. There's nice furniture, pictures on the wall. Matter of fact, it has everything that should make a man happy and comfortable, with the possible exception of a view. And the view, as from many other Greenwich Village apartments, consists of other windows from other rooms. However, don't forget this window. It's a very special window. Jeannie, could you? Could you look a little alive? I'm alive. But as alive as a dead duck. Look, Mr. March, for $25 an hour, you're not going to get Audrey Hepburn, you know. I mean, working nights and all. And in this heat. Now, sometimes you think we might get some small quality into a picture? I thought getting quality was your department, Mr. March. That's very good, Jeannie. Very good. Well, it's not coming out so bad, Mr. March. You know, you're one of the best magazine illustrators in New York. Everybody says so. Not so bad. Sometime wouldn't it be great if it turned out to be absolutely lousy? Absolutely wonderful. We are what we are. Take me, for instance. My ambition was I wanted to be a ballroom dancer. But look at my feet, tugboats. So you do the best you can. Spare me your earthy wisdom, huh? So hot. I'm suffocating. The weatherman on TV said there's a cold front moving in from Canada. I'll still suffocate on this junk. Oh, you'll see. The agency will think it's great. Yeah. Gee, what do you want for crying out loud? To be like that crazy artist who cut off his ear? Why, I bet you make more in a week than he made in a whole year. Jeannie, go on home. I thought you had a deadline to meet. Go home. Gee, I broke a swell date with, to work with you tonight. I'm not working anymore. You hired me for three hours. I'll pay you for three hours. Look, I don't want charity. I just happen to be considered one of the prettiest models in this town. I'm bored to death with your prettiness. Those blue eyes. Empty. Pale pink cheeks. That cute little dimple of yours. Thanks a lot. Just once before I'm old and gray, you think I might be able to see something that will excite me enough so I could be an artist for about five minutes? To be honest, I think you ought to see a doctor. I told my roommate who goes to NYU about... Get out of here. I'm leaving as fast as I can. Oh, I hate that cute little dimple. You're making me cry. I'd like to take all the empty, beautiful faces and drop them from that window one by one. Boy, sometimes guys really kill me. All I can say is, I wish I hadn't broken my date. You know, what makes you so sure you could paint anything better, even if you had the chance?
Don't like too much cooking in this heat. It's all right. All right. I know I promised. I know. I know, darling, but, but I just had to call you once more. Oh, it's, it's so wonderful just to hear your voice again. I can't tell you. I, no, I'm, I'm not going to cry. Harry, I'm not crying. Well, what do you want me to do? Am I supposed to be calm and collected like a, like a telephone operator? I'm not crying. No, no, there's no particular reason for calling. I, I just had, I mean, I, I wanted to talk to you once more. I w want to see if you're all right, Harry. Is your, is your cold better? It sounds much better. Is everything okay at work? Harry, I, Harry, I am controlling myself. Can't you just be a little bit patient with me? Crazy. I, I I don't know what to say to you. I I mean, after being alone for so long, I, I mean, Harry, you can understand that, can't you? Harry, it's very easy to say try not to be morbid. What am I supposed to do? Just push a button or something? Yes, darling, I'm sorry. Just try to be patient with me. Yes, yes, I know. It's the only thing we could do. I know. I know. I know. Don't you think it's torture for me, too? I keep talking and talking, and I don't say anything I want to. Harry. Harry, there must be some way we can make things right again. We were so wonderful for each other. I try so hard. I, I do anything you ask. God, I'd, I'd crawl on my hands and knees. Harry, I know I had an awful lot of awful faults, but I, I tried so hard to change, be whatever you wanted me to be. I, Harry, please, please, I can't help it if I'm crying. Harry, I'm so lost. Harry, Harry, I'm so lonely. Please, please. I can't help it. Harry. Harry, don't hang up on me, please. Wait. Harry, please. Don't hang up.
much going on up there. There's a woman upstairs trying to kill herself. Are you drunk, mister? I saw it from my window. Come on. Here. Lady! You say you saw a woman trying to kill herself Get the here. door open, will you? She was in here. Look, I saw her from my window across the way. You think I'm playing a game or something? Mister, if someone tells me a dame's gassing herself in one of my rooms, I come a-running. It could be the next room. Maybe she's in here. Traveler man's in there, an old fellow from Toledo. And like the sign says, he don't want to be disturbed. Look, I tell you, I saw her. Sorry for the disturbance, Mrs. Halverhan. Satisfied? You know, running a hotel in Greenwich Village is sometimes better than watching TV. I'm not crazy. I saw her. Go on home, mister, and sleep it off. I'm not drunk. What is this? What is this? The owner don't like too much cooking in this heat. Yes, all right. Good night. Temperature inversion, you know, like a mirage. Ella, I did see it. I swear I did. Leon says you have to drink at least four full cups of black coffee. I don't care what Leon says. I did see it. And it's always good to use plenty of sugar. When a person's blood sugar gets low, lots of things can happen. Why is it a woman marries a doctor and in ten minutes she knows more than the Mayo brothers? What was it this time? A boy or a girl? Both of them. Again? Again. Somebody who's already had five children, you'd think, would start getting good at it. Not Mrs. Monahan. Well, you look a little better than when I left an hour ago. Yeah, I guess that shot you gave me did the trick. I feel... You know, this is really one for the book. This character needs a head shrinker, so he comes to an obstetrician. The obstetrician and his wife happen to be my best friends. When this thing happened for the second time, I... All I could think of was to come running. Leon, it couldn't have been a dream twice. I was awake. I know I was awake. Half awake, Buster. Big difference. Subconscious going on like a house of fire. You, uh, you want to know the technical name for it, ask Ella. 
He knows all those big words. Well, it does have something to do with the layers of sleep, Tony. Your subconscious is lamp. Is that her? Yeah. Looks like a thyroid case. Next time you see her, tell her to have a basal metabolism. Very funny. Look, what happened to you is happening right now to 50 different people. If you want my honest opinion, you had a little bit too much to drink, you fell asleep, and you had a recurrent nightmare. All right. You don't believe me? Go see a psychiatrist. He'll tell you the same thing and send you a nice bill. Leon. Now, if you'd ever been wide awake and bright as a sparrow, and uh, maybe tying your shoelace or uh, shaving that ugly face of yours, and you'd seen a woman that wasn't there, that would be different. What do you mean, different? Ella's very fond of you. We'd come to visit you every other Sunday and bring you some nice chicken soup and some homemade fudge. <laughs> How do any of your patients stand you? Because I always deliver boys. Oh, no. Hello? Yes. It's Mr. Monaghan. Tell him I ran off with my red-headed nurse. Well, how often, Mr. Monaghan? He says his wife's pains are coming every two minutes now. Tell him I gave up medicine as an impulse. No, now, Mr. Monaghan, it's all right. Don't you worry. You know your wife's all right. He'll be right there. Yes, Mr. Monaghan. You think you've got nightmares? Oh, look, Tony. Do you think if I thought there was anything really wrong, I'd kid around about it? Hey, you know, maybe it's just the ketchup stains, but that looks different from the most of your tripe. You go home and get a good night's sleep. You, I will see later. It's not just different, it's alive. But to me it is. She looks so sad. That's what I mean. It's alive. Jeannie, what are you doing here? Mr. March, I must have fallen asleep. I came in about one o'clock and I found the door wide open, so I just came on in. I thought maybe you'd just be gone a couple of seconds. What time is it? It's three o'clock. Three o'clock? What made you come back? To tell you off. Gee, some of the things you said. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, I'm sorry, Jeannie. Well, you should be. Well, then maybe you shouldn't be. Because if you're sorry, how can I be mad? You know, I got pretty fresh with you, too. So I've got as much reason to apologize as you have. Your apology is accepted, Jeannie. Do you mean I came all the way across town in the middle of the night for nothing? And I had to drink two martinis to get my courage up in the first place. Now, when you mix yourself another one. Okay. Would you like one? Uh-uh. Isn't it kind of late for working? Huh? Late for working. Huh. You know, I really should be getting home. My roommate's kind of an old grandmother, you know, with all the questions. Yeah. Well, if you're going to be working, won't you need me for modeling? Not this time. Who's that for? Just for me. You know, she looks kind of sad. Hmm. You don't know, like, too much cooking in this heat. Jeannie. Huh? Look out that window. What for? What's there to see? You know, Mr. March, I really am sorry about what happened. The way I lost my temper and all. You kind of lost your temper, too. I think it's kind of nice how we're both so sensitive about our work. You know, right after I left here, I went straight home and I asked my roommate, you know, the one who I can't help room. it if I'm crying, She's Harry. She's in psychology, and I asked her what she thought I should I do about so what I said to you this afternoon. She said, well, I should come straight over here and please. apologize. Get it off my... Please, I'm so lonely. What's the matter, Mr. March? 
I can't help it. Larry, Mr. March, are you sick or something? Larry, don't, don't hang up on me, please. I mean, have you got a pain or anything? Don't hang up on Mr. Marsh, do you want me to call a doctor? Jeannie. What are you doing, Mr. March? Mr. March, that, that lady's trying to kill herself. Well, this is one of those crazy games your village people are always playing. Is it some kind of a prize? Do you get a bottle of that green liquor that drives you nuts if you can fool me twice? Would you send a police ambulance? Hey, what's the address here? Mister, what's the address? 1218 4th Street. 1218 4th Street. Yes. How did he know? How did he know? How in God's name did he know? He could offer several impressive and complicated theories about time, which might explain what happened to Anthony March and the lady across the way. Actually, great Albert Einstein devoted much thought to the fantastic tricks that time sometimes seems to play, merely because we don't fully understand it. One scientist suggests that time is like a phonograph record, with the needle picking up the constant now. And in the case of Anthony March, the needle jumped ahead one groove and played that groove over and over again until actual now caught up. <laughs> As I said, the theories are both uh, complicated and impressive. However, why did this happen? Well, if it were a nice romantic little story, we would say so that Anthony March and the lady would meet and live happily ever after. But the fact is, he never saw her again. Well, then, did she at least make him into a formidable artist? This painting is considered different from March's usual work, but not much better. Actually, you could buy it in a New York gallery for about $200, if it were for sale. In a moment, next week. Next week, and every week, we'll be bringing you the personal records of the rarest kind of human experience. Man's adventure in the world of the unknown. That mysterious psychic world beyond our five senses. This is your invitation to take with us that astonishing one step beyond.